So in this short video, I want to talk about a couple of things that you may want to do to your files or your transcripts before you move them into NVivo, before you start your analysis. I'll start with some minor things, which however are still very important in my opinion. And then uh, I'll discuss one thing that's really important, something that uh, may and in fact probably will break your project if you don't think about it early. So you definitely want to stick around until the end. So first briefly before I start, uh, the whole concept of preparing your files and some of the things I'll be talking about, why do we care, why do we need to think about it? Well, uh, as a researcher, uh, as you embark on this uh, project, this data analysis project, uh, this will be your workspace, this will be NVivo, this software will be your work environment. So uh, you will become immersed in these files, you will become immersed in your data, you will spend several hours, sometimes more than 10, more than 20, sometimes more than 50 hours, just reading that stuff, coding that stuff, looking at uh, different patterns and things within the data. So of course, uh, it is very important to make it easier for yourself to be in that environment because you you want to make sure you have to make sure that you can stay focused that you don't get uh, your eyes don't get tired so so all these things lots of these things that i'll discuss are just uh, about that visual aspect about making it easier for yourself for your eyes for your brain to uh, to process this information i always do these things as you know i uh, do data analysis for a living so i spend multiple hours every day analyzing the data. So I always make sure that uh, it is th this task is a little bit easier by making by, by taking these steps I discuss in this video, as well as even uh, making sure that the whole environment, the whole setting uh, fits me, suits me well, and I feel comfortable. So I advise you to do the same. So even prior to thinking about your files and your computer, make sure that the whole environment around you is good and you know the lighting is good and you feel comfortable and you clean up your desk or you didn't if you prefer to work uh, with a uh, with a desk that's messy, you have your coffee or tea or whatever makes you happy and focus. So so this kind of thing. But now let's move on uh, to the actual tips on how to prepare the files. For, uh, for the NVivo work. So the first thing you want to do is to generally do some tidying up within your files. Uh, I mean, uh, especially nowadays, if you outsource your, uh, your transcription, so somebody is doing that for you, or you're using some automatic platforms or software, uh, chances are that there will be things like spelling uh, mistakes, some things missing or some inconsistencies. Even if you do it, if you do it yourself, and you copy and paste, for example, from different files because maybe you had different audio recordings, then again, there may be some inconsistencies, different uh, fonts, different colors, again, some errors. So all this kind of thing, you definitely want to just make sure that it's all nice and tidy. Again, as I said, this relates to what I said before. You, uh, you just want to make it easier for yourself when you are working in that file. You, you want to make it possible and easier to spend several hours reading that text and ideally not get uh, too tired. This may also include uh, font uh, types, font sizes, and spaces uh, between the uh, between the lines. So, uh, in general, you want to be using quite a large font. So again, I'm not talking about some huge fonts like 35, but you know, 12, 13, 11, rather than seven or eight or six. Uh, yes, you can zoom in and in vivo, but what's the point? So why waste? Uh, additional time is better just to have it nice and ready. So, so use quite a big and, and nice font, not a you know comic <laughs> font or anything like that. But as again, I know I'm saying some obvious obvious things, but you do have to think about these things. And most importantly, make sure that the font is ideally the same throughout, so it's not annoying. And then uh, the spaces between uh, the lines, as I said, this is very important. If I see a transcript where uh, as I start uh, start to work in NVivo and I know that uh, I just realize I'm about to code a transcript that has these tiny spaces between uh, the lines, I always know it's going to be a little bit more exhausting than the other, uh, the other ones that I've read. So this is one of the most important things, in fact. So f one and a half or two as, as spaces between the lines. It, again, it makes it easier for yourself, it makes it easier for your eyes to follow. You'll have to closely read every line of text, remember, so you want to be able to focus. Then partly related to this is general the general use of space. 
don't be afraid to have a lot of free space in your document i'll put it that way so i'd rather have extra space i'd ra rather i think i'll make a wrap out of it rather 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 uh, I'd rather have rather uh, extra spaces rather 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 extra spaces I'd rather have extra spaces or unexplained extra you know space between the paragraph than not have any spaces so the extra space you can just scroll through but if you don't have any spaces you just have everything is cramped closely again it's just difficult to follow and you get tired very quickly so use different paragraphs use spaces between paragraphs uh, distinguish between the the question and the answer just make it uh, again just nice and tidy and and easy to read and this kind of leads to another point namely uh, the use of different heading uh, heading styles in Microsoft Word. So you have different heading style, heading one, heading two, paragraph, and other options. And you may uh, may want to consider using these different styles for your speaker names. And now, uh, when would you consider doing that? So firstly, just for, again, for clarity, just to make it nice and tidy, of course, as I have been saying throughout this video. But secondly, and this is very important, if you plan in NVivo, if you plan to use the feature of auto coding, then you have to use the different paragraph styles. So now, if you're wondering what auto coding is and you don't know, then let me tell you, it's not what you're thinking or it's not what you're hoping it is. Because unfortunately, as much as I'd love it to be the case, and Vivo or auto coding will not code your data automatically or do your analysis for you. It's just a feature that is useful for in specific circumstances. I do have a separate video about this, but in a nutshell, auto coding is usually used either if you're uh, if you're using focus group data and you want to distinguish between and code between the different speakers uh, to be able to know the contributions of the separate speakers or if you have a very consistent interview guide where uh, the same questions in the same order were asked across different interviews. So in that case, you, you just want, you may ask NVivo to, uh, to code all these different uh, questions and answers separately. Of course, you will have to go into detail of each answer later and code it manually. So like I said, it's not really automatic, but there is this feature. Uh, if you want to use it, then you do have to make sure that your uh, your questions are also in a different in a different heading than your answers. If you're using if you're if you're planning to use it for focus group data, again, you want some consistency with the speakers. I won't be uh, wasting time on that feature here, but just remember there is this other video. If you want to use auto coding, then do pay attention to this low element. And then another thing that I was asked, uh, how about timestamps? How about uh, timestamps? So my answer, the short answer is, generally you don't want to be uh, worrying about timestamps. Uh, if you don't, again, if you don't have a good reason to use these, so there are some methodologies, for example, where such as discourse analysis, where you want to be very detailed as to not only how somebody said something, but when they said it. So. And these methodologies usually either number uh, the lines or you use, you're more likely to use timestamps. Otherwise, in most cases, you don't really need to report on that. So when you report on qualitative data, you report on the quotes, what people said, but don't really have to think about or don't have to report on when exactly they said it. So, so in general, you don't have to worry about timestamps. But then again, I know there are uh, softwares and, and lots of these automatic transcription softwares uh, they use timestamps uh, time stamps by default, which means that you'll probably have them in your transcript. And in most cases, this is not going to be a problem. So you may just keep them and import them, do, uh, import them to NVivo, even if you don't use them, unless, and this is important, and this leads us to the most important point of this video, unless these timestamps are in a form of a table, in a form of a table. Table, table, table. Yeah, this is a cliffhanger in my video. And now I just quickly wanted to take uh, that opportunity uh, to let you know that I offer, as you may know, I offer private tutorials. So if you want to talk about your study, if you have questions about these things I discuss, if you want to learn about NVivo directly from me, then explore all the options on my website. I offer private tutorials, Zoom tutorials on a variety of different topics. 
uh, in addition to having self-study courses about in vivo so all kinds of things just visit my website and you'll you'll explore all the different ways in which i can hopefully help you so the final thing the use of tables like i said in the if the timestamps are in a form format of a table where for example the timestamp is in a column and the text ends in the second column it's bad if you have a transcript again lots of people want to make it easier and clearer for themselves uh, just like i i recommend it which which is good uh however they they put uh, what they do is they create a table they put the speaker name for example in the column number one and and the, the whatever they say in column two this is not good you generally don't want to have any tables in your transcript uh, this is bad uh, and vivo is really bad at handling tables so basically what's going to happen among other problems is that uh, once you code something in the table normally in in vivo if you code something a sentence later if you open the code it gives you a list of all the sentences all the quotes that you coded if you do that in a table however somehow and vivo doesn't understand what to do about it so every time with every quote it will give you the whole table which is your whole transcript and just distinguish your low quote within that table so not only is this very very inconvenient because you have to scroll through full transcript just to find little words or or pieces of text that you coded it may break and it will probably break your project eventually because if you have lots of these tables every time a viewer has to show you all these tables uh, it basically stops uh, it loads so heavily and so long that eventually it just crashes this specific thing has happened to me unfortunately so i know what i'm talking about i've found out the hard way it will crash on you if you have lots of text if you have tables it will be inconvenient like i said either just crashing you or you'll be just very very annoyed so in any case just don't do it don't have tables if you already have it in a table in microsoft word there's this option that will help you just take everything out of the table automatically you don't even have to copy and paste every single thing just there with a few clicks you can basically just take everything out of a table so this is it i hope that you learned something new uh, give me some comments give me some recommendations suggestions for future videos and here is another video that i want you to watch now it's about auto coding in a vivo so it will help you understand if you need this option because it may or may not help you in your project